I spent the last two years working on this setup right here. I've gone through about 50 different products. I've injured myself many times using bad ones, but through constant refinements, I think we've got to the stage now where this is the most productive, healthy, dreamy, but realistic way to work. So we'll start with a few quick ones and we'll keep track of the budget as we go here. Okay, my laptop is the M1 Max MacBook Pro. I got it two years ago and it's been such a smooth sailing experience that it's one of the only times I've had not even any desire to upgrade to the very latest. It's fast, the screen is perfect, and the battery life just keeps going. My webcam is my iPhone. All you need is a cheap mount that sits on top of your monitor and you already have way better quality than any default webcam would have. You've got the ability to look down, although I'm yet to find a proper use for that. Plus, the really cool thing is that at any point during your call, you just take your phone off and have a look around with it. I mean, the quality difference is wild. We've got a 3D printed plant pot that's from Etsy and a banana. Those are for my enjoyment. And I've actually kind of gone to the dark side with the wireless charger. I've been fighting against wireless chargers for a long time because current wireless charging is slow. It generates more heat. This one's pretty expensive and it's not really wireless, is it? But what's made me go for it is three things. The first, that for me to be productive on this setup, I need to be able to focus. It's gotta be as clean as possible. It's just not inviting to work at a messy desk. And so even if this gadget can hide one cable for me, that's a worthwhile investment. But it's not just that. This is a two-in-one. It charges my phone and it charges my earphones, which is such a nice to have because while I charge my iPhone every night by just plugging it into my laptop, I've never managed to get into the rhythm of keeping my AirPods charged. So oftentimes when I've left to go away somewhere in a hurry, I've had to do so with like 30 percent left. Not anymore. And then three is that iPhones need to be both on charge and horizontal like this to activate the new standby feature, which I thought I would never use, but has ended up being a really neat way to still be near your phone, see what you need to see, be reachable, but with your phone just out of arm's length so you have to think twice before picking it up. Okay. Time for the six things that really make this setup special. Starting with a desk, this is the Magnus Pro. And on the surface, it might seem like this slightly cringe desk, but for gamers, with the way it's marketed and this customizable RGB strip. But there's two reasons that I've ended up sticking with it. One is that it's both a sitting and a standing desk, and it does both of those things really well. I mean, for starters, it's got presets. So number three is what I use it on when I'm standing. Number two is what I use it on when I'm sitting. And then number one is what I set it to when my fiance, Drisha, wants to work on it. But also, you get a lot of cheap sit-stand desks where the extra moving parts introduce a bit of rattle. You forgive it at the start because you find the concept of the desk so cool, but longer term, you grow to hate it. And so the fact that this desk is made of solid steel is a massive pro. And the fact that the height adjustment is so smooth and precise is really cool because it's not just that you use it to move between the sitting and standing positions, but you're also using it to calibrate those sit-stand positions precisely to you, such that your arms are not angling up like this, but instead resting at 90 to 120 degrees. That's the ideal position, which can be assisted with forearm rests like you see here. These are beautiful, by the way. They make your arms feel like they're getting a warm hug from below. And then if you ever don't want to use them, you just press the levers underneath and they're gone. And then the second part of this desk is the organization. This is designed for people who just don't want to ever see cables. For example, almost the entire thing is a magnetic surface, which lets you do really cool stuff, like use these magnetic anchors to pin down cables and keep them straight, but in a way that's not permanent, because if you ever want to move it around, you just give it a tug and out it comes. Or like this is a headphone slash banana mount. But again, it's magnetic, so to take it off, you don't need a wrench. Plus, it even lets you do stuff like put magnetic cable enclosures on the side of your desk. So let's say you had a massive desktop PC mounted on the floor and all your cables were traveling up, just route them through this so they're not sprawled out like the technological equivalent of the Amazon rainforest. I like the fact that the control panel is baked into the desk as opposed to sticking out like it does on most. But my single favorite thing is this power cable in the base of the leg, which I realize it seems like a really weird thing to get excited about, but what it means is that this is the only power cable you will ever see. Because it takes the power into the desk, roots that power up through the leg of the desk into an extension port that sits behind. Which means, yes, every single gadget that sits on your desk can now connect to a power source that's like directly behind it. And all the loose cables can fall into the dedicated cable management tray, which from the front, you cannot see. It's such a perfect solution because usually with a standing desk, you have to think twice every time before adjusting the height. Because trust me, going from the sitting to the standing position while realizing that your monitor's power cable is only just big enough for the sitting position, it's a very expensive mistake. Which if everything is wired into the desk itself, which will be moving up and down alongside the tech on it, you don't need to worry about making. You do have to build it yourself though to save on international shipping costs, I guess. And that is a mild pain in the bum, but Hey, if you're enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be 
indescribable. And then on it, we have our mouse and our keyboard. So this is the Logitech MX Master 3S. It's quite a popular mouse. And if you know me, you'll know that I like finding products that are a bit less mainstream, a bit off the beaten path, but I just keep coming back to this one. It's a combination of the shape. You wrap your hands around this and you think, oh yeah. It's got this really fancy matte finish. Fairly quiet, but still satisfying mouse clicks. It's got an electromagnetic scroll wheel that's both really fast at scrolling while making it feel like you're in complete control, and the ability to intuitively scroll sideways, which is one of the first things you notice you're missing when you move from a trackpad to a mouse. And it's just nice and weighty, in a way that makes you feel like a true executive when you're doing office stuff and there's not too much movement. But then equally, if you ever want a game where you'll be moving your mouse more like this, then you'll want to go for something lighter. And then the keyboard, which I've talked about before but this is the Logitech Ergo K860, and it's not an obvious choice. It's not a mechanical keyboard. It's using the technically cheaper to make membrane tech. And I mean, look at it. It's not exactly a fashion show. <laughs> but this keyboard has gone a long way towards saving my hands. It protects your joints with the fact that the keys are cushioned. And the weird shape of it actually helps to reduce back strain, which I realize sounds like a really strange perk for a keyboard to have, but try something for me. So hold your arms out and then rotate them in with not you, Josh. But yeah, try this. Put your hands out and then rotate until your hands are flat, your normal typing position. That should be noticeably less comfortable because you're putting your hands through an unnatural rotation. I know it might sound like a minor niggle, but because an average office worker might spend eight hours a day for 50 years of their life doing these minor mistakes, they can build up to cause some major problems. Now I will say it's not a perfect keyboard. It takes up a lot of space. It doesn't have backlit keys. But then on the flip side, the battery life, insane. I've been using this for over a year and a half and I still haven't changed the AAA batteries that came with it. Now, I also realize the overall budget to this setup is creeping up, but I'm doing this from the perspective of this is the best of the best stuff and you don't need to get all of it. Just use it as a guide to fill in the blanks that you currently have. Okay, so at this point you might be thinking, desk seems pretty solid, but Aaron, that's not a real chair. And you'd be right, but here's the thing. Sitting properly upright for long periods of time it can be tiring because you're effectively having to keep the stabilizing muscles in your abs and your back engaged at all times. You do that anyway when you're standing, but it's just that when you're sitting on a nice, comfy, luxurious office chair, the temptation is to relax those muscles, or in other words, to slouch. And that can give you some temporary relief, but the thing is, we were not designed as humans to be in a slouching position. So doing that for long periods of time, it can put pressure on your organs, it can disrupt your digestion, it can cause misalignments with your spine and like a hundred other things. And so you can do yourself a world of good just by reducing the amount that you do that. And I've come to realize that one way of forcing myself to achieve this is a stool that doesn't let you slouch. There's a particular reason why I've stuck with this one. It's height adjustable, so I can use it, Drisha can use it. It goes high enough that you can kind of use it as a support while semi-standing. And then when it does get tiring, which it will, because this is more active sitting than slouching in a comfy office chair, I just see that as a good time to get up and do something else for 10 minutes. That's good for your body, but it's also good for your eyes, because your eyes relax when not forced to look at something right in front of them. Ah, but then there's one more thing, this stool, wobbles, meaning that you get this natural bit of motion in during your sitting sessions, just enough for your body to not switch off. And it's also a comfort thing. If one position gets boring or you just feel like doing something a bit different, you can. And then what works so well with this is the floor props. So this one here is the QB Go. You know when I was doing that fitness transformation last year and I was making all of those different changes to try and sort myself out? Well, the single most powerful thing that I did during that transformation was my walks. I do one walk 20 to 30 minutes every single day. And even if that was the only change I'd made, I still probably would have had 50% of the results. So I've been trying for a long time to integrate that concept into my desk setup. I tried a vibrating pad, which was pretty fun, but just didn't burn calories at nearly the same rate. I tried a treadmill, but it was unsustainably massive, made lots of noise. And I also kept finding myself getting lost in my work and accidentally placing my foot into the mechanism on the inside of the treadmill. So in the end, I decided to go for an elliptical and the QB Go has just been the best one I've used. My complaint would be that it doesn't feel very high tech with its calculator like display, but it's basically silent. It's super low impact on your joints. The screen lights up so you can see it clearly in lower light. And basically the whole thing is made of nylon and is on wheels. So it's super easy to move around, which I do. And I know it sounds excessive. Like what kind of madman tries to be productive while also having a workout at the same time, but the way I see it, if you just create the opportunity, 
it will just happen naturally. You kind of use it as a footrest to start with. And then when your feet are there, it's just like, oh, well, might as well move them around a bit. And before you even know what's happened, you're in a flow state with your work, you're getting loads done, your core is active, and your legs are burning an extra 150 calories per hour. And then this is the fluid stance board. It's basically like the wobble stool, but to use when you're standing. It's annoyingly expensive for what it is. It's basically some foam strapped to some recycled plastic, but it is the best board I've used. In that it lets you roll around in all directions in a way that activates your core and allows you to shift around if you get uncomfortable. And it's also just a bit of fun. You know when you first discovered an office chair and you sat there whizzing round and round? It's kind of like that. It makes the idea of standing much less unappealing than it can be. Okay, you can't have a perfect setup without talking about lighting. Good lighting is the difference between clear vision and great focus and eye strain problems and a messed up sleep cycle. And honestly, the more that I've used this BenQ halo light, the less I felt like it's a gimmick and the more I felt like this is the desk lamp done right. So, for starters, the fact that it mounts onto your monitor is already a massive win because it's one less stand that needs to sit on your desk and take up that valuable space. Plus, it can wire in from the back so you never see a cable. And then you've got the actual light it creates. The first thing I like is that it projects light in front of your screen to light your desk and what's on it while purposefully avoiding the glare on your screen that would come from a lamp that sits to the side. I'm quite lucky here because I already work in a room that gets lots of sun, but if you don't, then having a bright light source that you can set to daylight colors will make a massive difference. But then what's really cool is that as the light starts to dip, it can also project light behind your screen. Think about it this way. If you're sitting in a dark room and you're trying to focus on a bright screen, then your eyes are simultaneously trying to increase light and also restrict it, which can very quickly lead to eye fatigue and then cause headaches. So should you just turn the room lights on? Well, yeah, that would kind of fix that problem, but then you'd have to deal with reflections or glare on your screen that will make the image look hazy and less contrasty. So the ideal is to have something called bias lighting, which is light that spills behind and around your bright screen so your eyes are less confused, but doesn't directly shoot towards your eyes and affect your perception of the image. Like, check this out. So you know how that middle rectangle is getting darker as you go from left to right? Yeah, well, it actually isn't. This is an illusion showing how if the background around your image gets lighter, your perceived contrast within the image will rise, even though the image itself isn't changing. And then, the most important aspect of this is the color temperature. So we've got two of these lights. They're both synced up to one of these wireless remotes, which mostly works as expected, but is a bit finicky. And essentially you can use this to swivel the brightness level, or you can use it to make the lighting cooler during the day, which will give your eyes a signal to stay more alert. And then you can shift that to warm light for those late night sessions. So you can still see what you're doing, but just in a way that's not reactivating your body's wake up response. And then we can't not talk about the piece de resistance. This is LG's 5K ultra wide. And let me tell you, for the longest time, I've avoided using a monitor. I've always been this hardcore laptop guy who migrates from room to room, either in a cross-legged position or leaning over on the floor. Basically all the things that you're not meant to do, but that you just end up doing because that's what you feel like in the moment. But if you really wanted to optimize, then you should try to build a setup where your neck can be kept in a neutral position, not looking up at your screen, not looking down at your screen, straight on. And a monitor is just a really good way to do that, especially if it's on an arm like this, because as well as freeing up that valuable desk space versus a stand, it means you can move it to whatever position makes that alignment happen. There's the productivity side of it. I'd gotten so used to fiddling with two windows side by side on my MacBook that for a long time, I'd almost shut myself off to even the possibility that on an ultra wide screen, using an app like Rectangle, you can just snap one window into one half and the other right next to it. Working on this screen has been good for my eyes, good for my neck, good for my productivity, but also I know that I like sitting on a floor or curled up on a couch. So my number one priority with this entire setup was to make sure that as well as being the healthiest place to work, to make sure that I actually use it instead of the floor, it also has to be the easiest way to work. And so what I really, really love about this monitor is that with one single Thunderbolt 4 cable, the image can feed from my laptop to the monitor. Meanwhile, the power can feed from my monitor to my laptop. So I've just made it as easy as possible to plug myself into this setup. And as soon as I'm plugged in, there's a sense of being settled. Like, I don't need to go anywhere to grab a charger. And then if you don't go for the monitor approach, I would still recommend you get a laptop stand just for the sake of your neck. This is the one that I've been using for a few months, and I do think it is the laptop stand perfected because it's super rigid, it's easily rotatable and very fun to do so. It does not flex from the position that you first set it in. It's got one leg instead of two, which reduces its footprint on your desk, and it's just super dense. Like, you don't move this. No one moves this. 
Now let me show you how I can take this to the next level with the Opera desktop browser. So I tend to keep my Slack, so all my team stuff happens on the right, my writing in the middle, and then my left is all the internet browsing stuff that I tend to do. The thing with the browser though is that it's the most versatile tool that most people use. It's what you use to do your shopping, it's what you use to buy tickets, it's what you use to consume content. And so part of the reason why I like Opera is that it allows me to easily switch between these different modes without taking up any more than a third of my screen. So all of my YouTube tabs are stored in this blue tab island, Shopping is in red, research is in yellow. And check this out, whenever you're in a specific tab island, you have two plus buttons. You can either add a new tab, which will create a new tab in your next tab island, or you can hit this mini plus to add a new tab within the island you're in. It's a level of organization that makes me very happy, and a level of animation smoothness that makes this feel like a continuously slick setup. Plus, I do also use this picture-in-picture -picture mode quite a bit when I want to take a video that I was watching there and drag it around to the rest of the screen. So, download the latest version of the Opera browser. It's the best browser for tech fans.